The story begins when our Daki and Troll is returning to Toa when Kilowog wonders where she has been given that she was supposed to be on patrol. After assuring Kilowog she is close, she notices something unusual on the sun's surface when a rift suddenly opens and shadow demons emerge to attack her. She tries to fend them off, but she's overwhelmed and it rips her apart, and when she dies, her Green Lantern ring returns to Oa. Later, the Guardians call for an emergency meeting with the Green Lantern Corps, who regretfully mourns the loss of a fellow warrior. They later reveal that soulless creatures from the antimatter universe called Shadow Demons have attacked and killed one of their own. They explain that they came from a rift in their sun connected directly to the universe. To make matters worse, they explain that Krona sent them. Krona used to be a Green Lantern who created the antimatter universe billions of years ago. His project has nearly eradicated all of creation. As punishment, he was turned into disembodied energy and cast throughout the cosmos. They thought he was gone, but he reconstituted himself in the antimatter realm, bringing the shadow demons under his control. They fear that Krona plans to use their son, the center of the universe, as a portal to attack Oa. In response, they've sent a squadron of lanterns to the sun to begin monitoring its activity. The Guardians have also started moving important documents and artifacts to the Broom Cane Star Cluster for safekeeping. With Oa as a target, they plan on evacuating the planet and suggest everyone charge their rings while they still can, as they also plan to transfer the central battery. Queuing up at the central battery, Newbie, Arisia, Rob is overwhelmed by the sudden events, still wrapping her head with the Green Lantern stuff. She wonders why the ring chose her when she was just a student days ago. Hal Jordan claims that must be what Avra, the first Green Lantern, felt. He then continued telling her Avra's story and how she became the first Green Lantern. Before there was order, there was chaos. The chaos outbalanced creation and hate outbalanced fellowship to which all life suffered. The Guardians foresaw it and thought the evil was too great to be left unchecked. In response, they gathered the light and sought their answer in the light of the will. They formed a powerful weapon that could turn armies to sand, giving birth to the Green Lantern Rings. They then gathered all the greatest warriors in the universe and chose four to be their champions. As they presented the rings to everyone at the assembly, the rings then chose their warriors, Gahu, Watchet, and Blue. What shocked everyone was when Avra, a mere scribe and chronicler to the Guardians, was selected by the last ring. Still unable to believe that he was chosen to be a lantern, Avra questions his ability and makes mistakes. After being selected by the rings, the Guardians sought to train them, but no training could have prepared them for what would come. When the Dominators continued to plague and conquer planets, the Green Lanterns were called to stop their advance, regardless of whether they were ready. They faced the entire force of the Dominators, and although they fared well at first, they were quickly overwhelmed and outnumbered that Blue died in battle. Seeing her killed, the others decide to retreat, and after discussing it between themselves, they chose to flee from battle while Watchet offers to cover their escape. After contemplating his destiny, Aver decides to stand up and believe in the Guardians. He explains that the rings were made from the will, so they simply need to will their survival. He faced the entire armada by himself, and when pushed down by the enemy, he stood back up. He then unleashed his powers, which destroyed a whole warship. After a bright light covered the area, Avra managed to create the first construct, a product of his imagination that would pave the way for future lanterns, and become the first Green Lantern. His allies saw his actions and followed his lead, leading him to victory against the Dominators. What was once a unique innovation becomes the way for all future Lanterns. Later, Arisia talks to Hal about rumors that someone got killed training with Kilowog. Hal chuckles and tells her that Kilowog may look rough on the outside, but he's a cakewalk. Compared to Deegan and recounts the story of Kilowog's own trainer. When Kilowog was still training to become a Lantern, he was trained under Sergeant Deegan and others. His methods were torture, and his training was hell. Before training, Deegan removes their rings and throws them in severe, harsh weather conditions to see how they would fare for survival. They were thrown into an active volcano, and even a whirlpool in a sandstorm. 
Later, an angry Kilowog accuses Deegan of not valuing their lives as he keeps throwing them into deadly situations, endangering them. Their argument quickly escalated into a fistfight when they were suddenly called to defend Shiraka from the Kundians. Deegan leads the other recruits, leaving behind a beat-down Kilowog. He then orders them to protect the refugees while he fights the invaders alone. Kilowog catches up to them, but it is already too late, as Deegan has been mortally wounded, seeing his mentor near dead. Kilowog decides to use a massive taser, sweep, to wipe out the enemies in one attack. Seeing Kilowog go over and beyond his duties, Deegan passed on his authority to him, but not before explaining that he was doing what was best for the rookies to help them train under the gravest situations, so that they may survive whatever attack befalls them. Aresia and Hal arrive at the Border Patrol, where they meet Sinestro and Lyra. Although Lyra is strange and speaks unconventionally, Hal claims she and Sinestro are the only people he'd rather have on his side. Hal then tells her Lyra's story. Lyra Omoto was sent back to her homeworld Jade to address war crimes committed by her people. Her homecoming was colored in death as the Kundians' corpses greeted her as she approached Jade. She was later greeted by Ryu, a member of the Golden Dragon and mistress of its leader, Kentor Omoto, her father. She confronts Ryu responsible for the massacre of the Kundians. Ryu explains that they were sworn enemies of her father and questions her honor for going against her own family. A fight quickly breaks out between Lyra and Ryu, to which Lyra bested her. She then walks into the place as an emissary for the Guardians to hold them responsible for the deaths of thousands of its enemies. She's later greeted by her mischievous brother Reuben, who attacks her from the shadows and questions her loyalty. She eventually defeated him, but not before explaining that it wasn't about where her loyalties lay, but because it was her duty. Lyra later confronts her father after it has been deemed by the Guardians to be a hostile world. She initially thought that Ryu or Ruben's leadership led to their situation, but realized that it was her father pulling the strings. Kentor explains that he had a life's worth of provocation when the Kundians invaded their world. Back then, when the Kundians invaded and surrounded them, the Green Lantern assigned to their sector came to help, but he didn't stand a chance against the Kundians. Overwhelming number. When the Lantern died, his ring flew toward him, thinking he could finally use its powers to defeat their enemies, but it flew past him and towards Lyra. Seeing her father back then surrounded, she cast her ring to the sky and called for help from the Green Lantern Corps, who came and defeated the Kundians. Kentor felt dishonored having to be protected by the Green Lanterns, and he sought to restore his honor and become a warrior that their world deserved. He tried to convince Lyra to join his cause and surrender the ring to him, but she refused. When words are not enough, a fight breaks out between Lyra and her father. He managed to impale her to the wall and steal her ring, but when he put it on, it broke his armor. She bested him in close combat, even without the ring's powers. Seeing her grow up to become quite a warrior, Kentor stabs himself and dies in her arms. As more lanterns show up at the platforms monitoring the sun's activity, one of them mentions that it will soon get crowded, except for Mogo. When Aresia questioned if he was a lantern, the others wondered why Hal hadn't told her about this story. He pulls her outside and tells her of Mogo's story. Back then, a creature called Bolfunga, the Unrelenting, was infamous for having an insatiable thirst for combat. He's traveled worlds in search of fighters, and with hundreds of victories, only one warrior was left willing to face him, Kloba Vood. The battle quickly ended with him taking out Kloba's arms, basking in his victory. Bolfunga claims to be the greatest warrior in the galaxy. When Kloba objects, saying that he still has to beat Mogo, Balfunga arrives at the said destination and calls Mogo out. When he doesn't respond, Balfunga sends energy probes to find him. After weeks of tracking a plethora of powerful energy signatures, his search still comes out fruitless, and he decides to use explosives to flush him out from hiding. He later realized that the planet itself was Mogo when it used its powers to extinguish the fires he had started. Realizing he didn't stand a chance against an entire planet, Balfunga tried to flee, but Mogo captured him before he could escape. After having told Mogo's story, Hal and Aresia are suddenly under attack by shadow demons. Lyra and Sinestro arrive to save them when they are surrounded and outnumbered. 
Aresia passes out after getting caught up in Sinestro's last attack. Aresia wonders if Krona's attack is destiny, to which Sinestro claims his old friend Abin Sur would have agreed with her, to which he then tells Abin's story. It turns out a creature called Atrocitus tracked down Abin Sur and attacked him at his home. He even managed to grab Aben's power battery, leaving him almost dry. With practically no charge left in his ring, he saves it for big attacks and uses close combat to take the edge off. Aben Sor struggled to hold him off with so little energy that he was cornered. Suddenly, Sinestro arrives to help him, and together they beat up Atrocitus. Realizing that he didn't stand a chance against two lanterns, he pries the power battery open and throws it into the city to explode while he grabs that chance to escape. Aben catches the leaking power battery and heads off into space before it blows up. He manages to recharge his ring just before it exploded. He then returns to the planet to capture Atrocitus. Sinestro explains that Atrocitus belonged to a terrorist cell called the Five Inversions. Last week, a ship crashed into a prison in Ismalt, where Atrocitus was imprisoned for 700 years and managed to escape using the said ship. He has since then been hunting Green Lanterns, who have already taken out three of their colleagues. He explains that according to the Book of Oa, Atrocitus claims to be able to talk to Destiny, but Sinestro doesn't believe in Destiny and suspects that he was able to lock onto the ring's energy to find the others. Abin Sur returns Atrocitus to Yismalt, but not before he tells him of his destiny. He tells him he will die because his ring fails him in his most desperate hour. He claims to know of the Green Lantern Corps' destiny. He explains that in the future the most vile murderers and deviants in the universe will be united under Sinestro's leadership. Then there will be a war of light that will burn the surface of Oa black and leave scores of lanterns dead. The green light will be extinguished and leaves a new core of fear. Hal suddenly arrives and interrupts their story claiming that the sensors just picked up a tremendous spike in the readings, and a massive swelling has appeared in the sun's center. The sun finally explodes and a massive Krona emerges from the rift. Sinestro worries that he could annihilate any world if Krona manages to get past them. The Green Lantern Corps quickly confronts the giant Krona, but is thwarted by thousands of shadow demons that quickly overwhelm them. Hal moves past the distractions and attacks Krona directly, but it uses the shadow demons as a shield to protect itself. A group of lanterns attacks Krona from the side while Hal has it distracted. Krona saw them coming up and wiped them out in one swoop. Seeing many of their fallen comrades, Sinestro decides to retreat and regroup. Aresia thought that since Krona was antimatter, they needed to hit him with matter equal to or greater in mass. Since Krona was targeting Oa, she suggested ramming the planet at him. They quickly returned to Oa, covering the planet in their power, and slowly pushed it toward Krona. Krona saw them coming and used his shadow demons to attack the lanterns directly. With only so few left, Kilowog worries that they need more power to pull it off when suddenly Mogo arrives to help. With Mogo leading the assault, they manage to push Krona back to the sun, thereby killing it as it gets crushed by Oa, turning their red sun into a green one. In the aftermath, Mogo agrees to be the Lantern's temporary home base until they're able to build a new one. The Guardians commend Aresia for his ingenuity, which earned her an entry into the Book of Oa. Although they have lost many comrades in this battle, they welcome a new generation of Lanterns in hope of a brighter day. Aresia later earns the respect of her fellow Lanterns. The Lanterns then quickly move on to rebuilding while Hal told her how he confronted an army of Manhunters, and his only backup was a squirrel. The End Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos, and please make sure to subscribe and tap the bell to be notified about our latest videos. See you next time!